All right, for number one, I'm going to recommend you do, you, you do not use distortion on this. Got to go clean. This way, it's much easier to hear when something is amiss when you're playing arpeggio stuff like this. So, with this one and this one alone, well, all of them are going to start at 60, but this one, every time you play this correctly once, you bump it up five and see if you can do it again. Anytime you come across a chord and you notice that the ring finger uh, gets out of place and causes a sour sounding note, stay right where you're at, fix the ring finger, and then keep playing and then finish from where you started. But you still need to be able to go from beginning to end 100% complete or 100% correct before you increase the speed. So let's say you're moving up to the, the C5 over here. And that's where the mistake happens. So you state the C5, you correct it, your fingers, so this way it sounds good again, and then continue on from there. But don't increase the speed at that point. You need to go back to the start, make sure you can play all of it before you increase the speed. <clears throat> so and do that every day. 60, 65, 70, and so on every day. Go as fast as you can, and write down on the page how fast you end up getting. Uh, here we go at 60 beats a minute. One, two, three, four. I'm just doing various demo speeds just so you can follow along at the different points just to make sure everything is being played correctly. One, two, three, four. Here it is at 140. <clears throat> One, two, one, two, three, four. Do that again. One, two, one, two, three, four. That sounds better. Do one more at 180. One, two, one, two, three, four. So as you get faster and faster, it's going to be extra important that you start looking ahead at where you're going to go. So like when you're going down to the first fret here, as you're finishing that A5 arpeggio, start looking down where you're going to move your hand, and then look back up where you're going to move your hand again. So this way you kind of you know where you're gonna land. Instead of trying to look as you're moving, look before you move. Makes it a bit easier. <clears throat> all right, so numbers, well, yeah, all the rest of these, you'll still be doing the same four maintenance speeds, the 60, 80, 100, and 120. So I'll demonstrate all these at 60 and 120. And any time that, let's say, number five here for example since it's well see, I don't know if it's gonna be the most complicated but this one might be the most complicated I don't know but anyway let's assume this is why not use it as an example so let's say it's proving to be very difficult so like you can play it okay with the repeat at 60 beats a minute 80 beats a minute seems extra difficult and then like so you decide to go up 90 to make sure you don't push it too far, and then 90 is just an absolute mess. So you may want to spend like a day of practice or a practice session or two where you forego the repeat, work the entire thing up by 5 beat per minute increments, just like the whole speed building method. Get that up to 120, and when that feels comfortable, then you can start adding the repeat in and maybe go up by 10s at that point, and then eventually go up by 20s again. Or another thing you could do is like you start at 60 you get your repeat in there you do the repeat thing at 80 
and then maybe do a 90, 100, and then 105, 110, 115, 120. So just you will have to use some judgment on how quickly you increase the metronome, but definitely no more than 20. Uh, I want you to hit those four speeds at least, so this way you get a nice, you know, got the slow speed, you got the fast speed, and a couple in the middle. So distortion back on. <clears throat> and here we go at 60. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two. Okay, on the number three. <clears throat> Sixty beats a minute. <clears throat> one, two, three, four. 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 And one twenty. One, two, three, four. 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 One. All right, on to the eighth notes. So we'll be counting this as one and two and three and four and so <clears throat> you, every time it's a downbeat, you strum down. Every time it's an upbeat, you strum up. So your hand and foot are synced together. Down with the downbeat, up with the upbeat. Here we go at 60. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two. One Say what you play, and it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. One and two, three and 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 four. One 
and two, three and four, one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four, go. And the 120. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, and two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Done. Alright. If any questions come up, let me know. And we'll do more stuff uh, for that mode talking scale stuff so that's right you are that's right uh, so if, again if you get to try filling in those sharps and flats there's another little trick there <clears throat> so in, when you're using major scale stuff you will never have sharps and flats mix within the same major scale so like in the key of a flat you can have flats you can have naturals but you can that have flats, naturals, and sharps. Doesn't happen. Yeah, this is just working within the major scale. There are some exotic scales where there are exceptions to this, but we're not there yet. So if you notice that you have a sharp and a flat within the same scale, something went wrong. But if you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you again next week.